Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious 8 port multi gigabit level 2 plus managed switch with 4 SPF plus slots. So this was provided to me by the distributor but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So let's get this opened up. Okay we have an accessories box here. So we have some rack mount ears, we have a power cable, a console connection cable, screws, and rubber feet. Pull the switch out, quick install guide. Here's the switch, vents on the side, we have the screw holes for the mounting tabs, power in the back, fan on the opposite side, mounting holes. And here on the front, we have the console connection port and we have eight ethernet ports. And these support 100 megabit, one gigabit, or 2.5 gigabit. So this would be a great option if you're wanting to up your ethernet speeds. And then over here we have our SFP ports. So I'm not going to be rack mounting this, so I'll be putting the feet on the bottom. And then I'll get this plugged in and we'll test it out. Okay, so I have the switch plugged in. It's connected up to my network with this network cable. So I want to register this on the Ingenious Cloud. So I have the Ingenious To Go app installed on my iPad. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn this over and there's a QR code on the bottom. Heading over to my iPad, I'll hit the big plus button in the bottom and I'll hit register device and I'll scan that QR code so I can switch the switch back over now. So it brought up the device, I'll hit register. It says name the device, I'll leave it as the name. It says assign to network site now, I'll tap that. I'll assign that to the network name network, I'll hit next. It says connect your device to the internet. It says power up and plug the switch into the network device. That is your router. So I've already done that. I'll just hit finish setup. It says congratulations, your setup is complete. Once you finish upgrading, your network will be ready to go. So I'll hit finish here. And now we've added the switch to the Ingenious Cloud. So now I'll switch over to the web interface. Okay, so I'm logged into the Ingenious Cloud and now we can see it says two switches. So if I click on that, it will show the two switches. So the top switch is the 2.5 gigabit switch. So I can click on details here. And this will bring up the switch. If we look down here at ports, it shows what's plugged in. This is not a PoE switch, so this does not have power over ethernet information. And then we have IP addressing and a photo. So there's not much to look at here. So I'm going to hook up some 2.5 gigabit clients and then we'll pop back into here and we'll take a look at this a little further. Okay, so I want to go over some of the hardware I'm going to be using to test this. So I have the Ingenious switch. This is a QNAP NAS. This is a TS453BE. And then here I have a tower PC. So I first tried this 2.5 gigabit PCIe gigabit ethernet card in my PC. And then I had this USB to 2.5 gigabit adapter that I plugged into my Mac. And between the two, I could get 2.5 say upload but not download. The download might have been 1.3 gigabit. So I tried different operating systems, different drivers. I tried swapping things back and forth and I could not get that to transfer at 2.5 gigabit. So then I got a QNAP PCI ethernet card and put it in my QNAP NAS. And between the devices that ran all of these, I could still not get 2.5 gigabit up and down on any of the equipment. So a pattern I noticed as these two have the same Realtek chip in them. I forget the exact number, but it's a pretty common chip for a 2.5 gigabit. And the QNAP uses an Intel chip. So what I ended up doing is getting a second QNAP card and I installed that in the PC. I took out the card here and then I downloaded the Intel driver based on the chip that this is based on and installed it on here. This doesn't come with the Windows driver but it does work with Windows just fine. So then I had the same QNAP card in both of these devices. Once I did that I was able to do 2.5 gigabit transfer. So my frustration had nothing to do with the switch. Even if I connected these devices and connected them directly to each other with a single cable still could not get that fast transfer. So if you're looking for cards for a PC I personally didn't have any luck with Realtek cards and I had better luck with Intel based cards and I'm sure there are other Intel based cards besides the QNAP cards. With these cards I could do a direct connection between the two devices and I could go through the switch and I could get 2.5 gigabit download and upload. So hopefully that saves people some frustration in trying to get 2.5 gigabit up. So then the cables I'm using here are a CAT6 cable. You can also use CAT5E but in my testing just in case my cables were bad I got some CAT6 cables because I tried all sorts of things. I tried Windows Linux and such. So like that USB adapter still could be usable in a Mac because it is faster than just gigabit. It's just not 2.5 each way. There are are some other adapters you can get for Macs that might be faster. You could get a Mac mini with a 10 gigabit ethernet built in and it will down to 2.5 also. So I'm going to connect all this up. We'll go back in the interface and we'll see that it's connected at 2.5. And then I'm going to run a speed test to show you that it can run at 2.5 gigabit. Okay, so I have a bunch of equipment hooked up now. On the summary here, we can see the ports, but I'll click on ports here to get a more detailed view. So we have 2.5 gigabit links on one, four, and six. We have a gigabit uplink on two, and we have a gigabit client on eight. So if we scroll down, we can see the different ports here. So now we can click diagnostic tools. 
So here it shows the ports and the activities on them. I'll generate some activity. So here we can see on four and six, there's activity. So it's showing us if I hover over those, what we're seeing. There are also some ping tests down here. We'll hit next. These are cable tests. Here we can do a trace route, ARP table, and client list. So this requires a pro license, but you get a pro license when you first buy it. You get it for a year, so I could upgrade this. So I'll go down to my licenses. I'll go to switch. I'll say require switch pro license. It says, do you want to change the switch feature plan to pro? I'll hit apply. It says update settings successful. So now I'll go back into my switches. Diagnostic tools. And here we have the client list. Then we'll hit next. We have packet capture. So you can do packet capture here. And then we're back to activity. So I'll close this. So let's take a look at some speed tests I've run on this. Okay, so this is my 2015 MacBook Pro and it has USB 3.0 and I've used that adapter that has a Realtek card. And this is doing a speed test to my PC tower that's running the Intel card. And I got 2.4 gigabit download and about two gigabit upload. So as I was talking about that Realtek card, I could never get 2.5 either way. And now you're typically not going to see exactly 2.5. It'll usually be a little bit lower than that, but I couldn't get to that. But that's the speed to this tower. Then I ran a speed test also to the QNAP NAS, and here we can see I got about 2.4 download and 1.4 upload. So it's quite a bit slower to that NAS. So now let's switch to the PC Tower. So I should mention that the PC Tower and the QNAP NAS are both running the open speed test, and it's a web-based speed test. So this here is connected up to the QNAP NAS, and I ran the speed test and I got 2.4 down and 2.4 gig up. And this is what you would expect. You're, like I said, you're not going to get 2.5 exactly, but this is getting 2.5 gigabit speeds up and down. So if you're transferring files to and from the NAS, you're getting full speed out of this. Now over here, the QNAP NAS has the ability to run Chrome browser. So here I ran a test from the QNAP NAS to the PC and I got about two gig download and 2.4 gig upload. So it's hard to say why this wasn't 2.5 either way, but one reason could be that this is not an optimized system for a desktop. So this may not be an optimized browser. There could be other speed tests I could do both ways, but I do know that it can do 2.5 either way because I saw that over here on the PC. So when you're setting up systems like this, it's a good idea to use a tool like OpenSpeedTest to benchmark your systems, and then you can diagnose any problems like bad network cards, bad ethernet cables, or maybe some misconfigurations. So if you're upgrading your network to 2.5, what I would do is upgrade your server to 2.5, and then get a card for one of your clients, upgrade it to 2.5, test it out before you roll it out on all of your equipment. So that's the ingenious ECS2512 2.5 gigabit switch. So I think this is a great option if you're looking to upgrade your network to 2.5 gigabit, as People are working more and more with larger files, especially like video files and such. It's nice having a faster network. A switch like this gives you lots of options to connect things. You have your 2.5 gigabit switch here and you have your 1 and 10 gigabit SFP ports here. So you can hook lots of clients into this. When you hook this up to the Ingenious Cloud, you get a whole nother level of functionality with it. So if you have multiple offices, you can deploy these in your offices and then you can use the Ingenious Cloud to monitor them in a central location. So if someone has a problem, you can log right into the Ingenious Cloud. You can locate the port. You can see if it's connected up. You can run cable tests on it. You can also set up your VLANs, you can do packet monitoring. There's a lot of capabilities you have with this switch and the Ingenious Cloud. While I do like using the web interface to access the switch, I do like that you can add the switch using the app, and also you can manage it using the app. I just prefer the web for major usage, but it is nice to be able to do it on the go. You can do it from a phone or a tablet. So if you're a technical person that works for a business and you get a call, you can log right into the switch from wherever you are using just your phone. Those are capabilities I would have dreamed of 20 years ago, and now it's a reality and it's super easy to use and it's works slick. So so that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.